Well, good evening and welcome to First Baptist Church. Uh, I'm Alan Crosby, the pastor here, and I'm glad you could join me today. And uh, in just a moment, we're going to have a Bible study, and then uh, we'll also take prayer requests. So if you have prayer requests, if you would just note them down at the bottom of your screen so that I can see them. And uh, we'll be sure to pray for you today. Uh, we're going to give everybody just a few minutes to join in with us. Uh, if you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and open them up to Mark chapter 4. We're going to be looking at uh, verses 35 through 41 today. So uh, with that said, I'm just going to uh, pause for a few moments and uh, wait on everyone to get logged in. Good to see you, Bob. I'm glad you could join us. We have others. We'll check just to see if I got some emails on our uh, prayer site. Um, I think by now everyone knows that you can go to uh, prayer at fbcjewett.org and leave your prayer request. So if you have a prayer request, uh, please do that for us so that we can uh, pray for you. Also, um, Again, as I mentioned, you can uh, just put your request down at the bottom of the screen, and uh, I'll see those and add those to our prayer list as well, okay? All right. Thank you, Bob. Bob's given me a, a list of requests. I'm sure there'll be others. But again, I, I'm glad you could join me uh, today. Uh, just uh, let me give you a couple of reminders. Uh, one is that we are not having Sunday school for now. Uh, we're going to give that a little more time in light of the fact that we have uh, four members of our church with COVID-19. And uh, we just want to make sure uh, that we are safe and that no one else uh, gets that um, through through the church itself. And uh, But with that said, I do want you to know that we are having adult Bible study at 9.45 uh, each Sunday online. And you can pick that up uh, by YouTube or Facebook. It will be on both uh, um, on, on both of those. And uh, also then at 11 o'clock, uh, we are gathering uh, together still, but we're not doing it in our worship service uh, or in our church. We're across the road in our gymnasium that we call our FLC, our Family Life Center, each Sunday at 11. And uh, we're going to do that for at least the next few weeks. And uh, so we've got chairs spread out in there, and there's a lot of room. And uh, it just, just works better uh, during this time. So if you'd like to join us on campus, then we'd love to have you at 11 o'clock. Uh, we plan to have services every Sunday from here on out, uh, as, as long as God, as God will allow that to happen. So uh, I hope I can see you this Sunday uh, here on campus at 11. But if not, then uh, please join us on YouTube and on, or on Facebook. Uh, we will be live on YouTube at 11. And then uh, right after the service, we begin to upload the Facebook uh, to Facebook. And you'll be able to see it on Facebook as well in because uh, um, it'll be recorded and it's also being recorded on YouTube at the same time, so you can come back and watch it later if you don't catch it at 11. But, um, but I hope that you can join us uh, this Sunday at 11 o'clock here on campus. Um, all right, uh, well, we're going to go ahead and uh, look at the Word of God for just a moment and, uh, and talk about this passage, and then we will uh, get into our prayer time. But uh, if you have your Bible, look with me to... Matthew, or I'm sorry, Mark, uh, chapter 4, 35 through 41. And by the way, as we are going through the Bible study, if there's something that you would like to, uh, to remark on the study, then our question, just throw that up on the screen. I'll type that in on the screen, and uh, I'll try to deal with that if, if, I, can, if I see that in time. But um, in Mark chapter 4, uh, verse 35, the Word of God says, on the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. Um, and other little boats were also with him. 
In verse 37, and a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow and they awoke him and they said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. At the, and the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Let's, uh, let's begin with prayer and then we will talk a little bit about this passage. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you uh, for this day you've given us and thank you, Lord, that we can come together as believers in Christ and I pray, God, that you would help us as we uh, read your word together, as we uh, study it together. I pray that you'd speak to our hearts, Lord. Uh, as we look at this passage, Lord, I think it's one that we can all relate to. And uh, I just pray, Lord, that we would learn from it. And uh, that, Lord, we would trust you in faith in uh, every area of our lives. And God will praise you for all you do. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, as we uh, look at this passage, I've just simply uh, titled the, the lesson for this evening, Weathering the Storm. Uh, and it comes from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. Um, and again, if you have any comments, please uh, leave those comments in the comments section on your screen there. But you know, Jesus in this passage, he's been dealing with, uh, the, with the multitudes, with the crowds. He'd been teaching his disciples as well. And uh, he had taught them through several parables. And uh, we've talked about parables before. Of course, we understand that it's where uh, God takes or where Christ takes something that's just in everyday life. And, uh, and he makes spiritual application from it. And uh, he had been teaching them about the mustard seed and how small it was. And, and then he's, he made the point that yet as tiny as it was, it grew into something uh, very large. And uh, in another passage, he said that if we had the faith of a mustard seed, that we could say to this mountain, be moved, and it would be gone. So um, that that uh, teaches us a lot about, about our faith, our lack of faith. And it seemed that his disciples at this time uh, were still struggling with just who he was and his identity. Uh, but he often used parables to teach these lessons, and sometimes he used circumstances they faced uh, to teach them as well as we see in our text today. Um, many, many of you that are, are listening today, uh, one thing's for sure, and, uh, and this is true in life for everyone, uh, we're either about to go into a storm, we're in a storm, or we're coming out of the storm. It's just it's life, and we live in a fallen world, and, uh, and as long as there's sin in the world, uh, we will have storms that will come. We've all been affected by those, those storms. So um, we, we see the disciples, though, after Jesus had taught them, they're getting in a boat, and, he's, and he told them, he said, let's, let's cross over the sea. Um, I want you to notice with me the Savior's promise and presence. This is the first thing that we notice in verse 35. What does he say? He says, On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Uh, one of the things that jumps out at me about this story, and I've, I've preached on this and taught on this a lot, is just this, that the disciples were with Jesus. They were right there with him. He was with them in that boat, and still they were in a storm. And, I, and I, that just speaks to me, and I, I trust it speaks to you as well, in just the fact that just because we are in Christ and Christ is in us, it doesn't always remove us from the storm. Uh, so as we look at this passage, Jesus gave the order, or he, he said, let's, let's cross over the sea. Um, it does not guarantee smooth sailing, of course, uh, but he does guarantee his presence, that he'll always be there. Someone said we need to learn how to dance in the rain, and there's a lot of truth in that. Uh, let me just ask you a question before we continue on. What are some of the storms that you are facing in life? Um, for many of you, it could be health issues. Uh, maybe some of you are listening who are dealing with uh, COVID-19, this virus, uh, and I know from 
what I've been told is, is pretty rough. It's pretty hard um, to something. It's hard. It's something hard to go through. And uh, for many who are facing financial crisis, um, some of you have lost your jobs, have been laid off, and uh, really no promise of, of a job. Uh, it, it could be a whole host of things. We could go on and on, and and you might say those are there are storms that are in my life. Well, if you know Christ, even though you may be in the storm, it's comforting to know that Christ is with you, and He's with me. He always is. Um, the Bible He He promises that He will never leave us nor forsake us. He's He's always there. Um, he didn't promise us an easy trip in life, but he does promise us that we will arrive. And 1 John 5, 13, um, if you have your Bibles, you can look with me there. I, I love this verse, and I can quote it, but I want you to look as well. 1 John 5, 13, um, I have this highlighted in my Bible because it's a wonderful promise that John wrote when he said, These things have I written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. So in this promise, we, we learn that if we know God, if we have a relationship with the Savior, Jesus Christ, that we have eternal life. We know where we're headed. We're, we're just passing through this world. And, and yes, this is a, a very troubled world and a world full of storms in life. But we know that that Jesus will get us to the other side and that there's life in him and knowing him. So we see the Savior's promise in his presence. He said, let's go to the other side. Listen, if Jesus said, let's go to the other side, you know they're going to make it. Um, the question is, how are they going to deal with the storms as, as they cross the sea? But then the second thing, the storm came when they least expected it. In verse 37, we look at the passage. It says, and a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. Uh, so a great windstorm arose. Now we know that on the Sea of Galilee, which is where this took place, there are mountains that surround the Sea of Galilee. And on, on one side of the sea, the mountains rise very high. And oftentimes, um, and you probably already know this, but oftentimes the winds will come over the mountains or the clouds in the People that are fishing in the sea don't see it coming. And before they know it, the storm has come over and it's just uh, the winds pick up. And, and before they know it, they're right there in the middle of the storm. And that seems to be what has taken place here. But the storm came suddenly. And that's the way the storms of life seem to hit us, isn't it? I mean, I know people that live their life, they're always waiting on the next shoe, shoe to drop because they know a storm's coming. Uh, I don't know if that's the best way to live or, or not, but... We do know that uh, many times storms come when we least expect it, and uh, there's never a good time for them to come in our lives. Uh, but we need to prepare for the storms of life. Uh, how do we prepare for the storms of life? Well, I talked a little bit about this this last Sunday in church uh, over in uh, John 15, where we talk about abiding in the vine. And, and that's key in life, in, in every aspect of our life is that we are abiding in the vine and we're going to have a lot less trouble in life when we're abiding in Christ. And because when we're abiding in him, that means that we're engaged with God in prayer, that we're bringing everything that we do to him in prayer. Uh, we, we, don't, uh, we don't do anything in life unless we come to him in prayer and we're studying his word. We're consuming his word so that when we're making decisions in life, we're making good decisions because we're basing that on the word of God. But uh, you see, it's Jesus that can calm the storms of life. The Bible says that, uh, that the peace of God passes all understanding. And that's when we know Jesus Christ. I can't tell you how many times, uh, even recently when I'm, I'm counseling with people and, and you know, I, I don't know, sometimes I I think in terms of, uh, uh, I don't know, analogies such as a, a baseball diamond, you know, where you got a, a, you got a batter at home plate and then there's first, second, third base, and there's home plate. And of course, if you hit it over the outside wall, then you hit a home run. But in life, uh, listen, uh, sometimes people have trouble just getting 
to first base. And to me, getting to first base along that way, we're, we're trusting Christ as our Savior. But as we grow in our relationship with the Lord, it's vitally important that we not underestimate the power of God in his word. So we need to be studying his word. And if we fail to study his word, then we're not going to be prepared when the storms come. And and I talk with people and, and it seems so elementary that they want to move on past that to the next stage and in their growth and development. And, and I, you know, you can't do that. You can't shortcut God. You, you have to get in his word. That's where you're going to learn. That's where you're going to grow. That's going to get you to second base, to third base. And, and ultimately, uh, you'll be at the place you need to be in your relationship with the Lord. And, uh, and then in the end, you'll be with him in heaven. But who's the main character in this story? It's not the disciples, and it's not even the storm, but it's the Lord Jesus Christ himself. I mean, you think about it. He commanded nature to be calm in nature was calm. Isn't it interesting that everything that he commanded, it had to do what he ordered it to do. You know, when he cast the demons out, they had to leave. Uh, when he caused the storms to, to cease, they ceased. When he commanded them to cease, they ceased. Uh, he claimed, he commanded that people be healed and they were healed. But yet when it comes to us and the decision as to whether we trust him or not or in our relationship with him, he doesn't force himself on us. He doesn't make us. He gives us uh, an opportunity to make that decision. He gives us a, a free will. But he can calm your storms in life. And if you look at verse 39, it says, Then he arose, he rebuked the wind, and he said, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Now, I'm convinced that, that Jesus Christ could speak the word, and COVID-19 would be eradicated, would, be, would leave this world if he chose to do that. But uh, the important thing to note is that there's nothing too great for him. And then lastly, I want you to notice that the storm caused panic. The storm caused panic. Uh, sometimes God allows storms in life to get us to look up. And I can't help but feel that in our world, and especially here in our nation, that maybe God's trying to get our attention. Um, I think that sometimes God allows things to happen to get us to look up and and folks, it's time to wake up. It's time that we wake up as a nation that we begin to pray and seek God's face. We need revival in the land. And if revival doesn't come, if the, if the people of God, if, if our nation as a whole doesn't turn back to God, we're in deep trouble. But uh, these individuals in this boat, they were in a panic. As believers in Christ, hey, look, we're weathering the storm right now, but we shouldn't be in a panic. We should trust the one who's in control of all of it, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. So when the storm arose, fear arose in this story. Fear arose. They were afraid for their lives. They, they went and they woke Jesus up and they said, don't you even care? But folks, when Jesus arose, the Bible says that rather than fearing the storm, they feared him exceedingly. I find that to be interesting. I think they earned a new respect for him and knew that he was not just mere, just a mere man, but in fact, he might very well be the Messiah that he claimed to be. So when we fear God, our maker and savior, we can have peace in the storm and knowing that he's in complete control of our circumstances, that he's in complete control, even when things are out of control. There's not a storm too great that Jesus Christ can't bring a calm to. And I trust that whatever you're going through tonight, that you'll allow the Lord Jesus to bring peace to your storm in life. And if you're not going through a storm right now, if life is looking up and you're doing well, praise the Lord for it every day. Because I assure you that you'll not escape the storms of life. And it is Him that we find calm and peace in the storm. All right. So with that said, I wonder tonight if you have some prayer requests you'd like to share with me. Again, I encourage you to use our prayer email at prayer at uh, fbcjewett.org. You see that at the bottom of your screen. Uh, if you have prayer requests, you can email me. Also, you can uh, note that 
on your screen. So do we have any other prayer requests tonight? Um, let me give you a, an update. Um, I've, I spoke with uh, Bill yesterday, and uh, you know he and Sandra have COVID-19, but uh, I think they're on the upward swing. Uh, Bill said he still had a long way to go, but he was he could tell he was making progress. So we praise the Lord for that. Uh, I talked with Mr. Lewis yesterday, and uh, Mr. Lewis said it was the first day that he and Bonnie did not have any fever. So they seem to be improving, and we praise the Lord for that. Uh, I encourage you to continue to please pray for them and, uh, and pray that God would protect uh, our church from anyone else from getting the, the COVID virus. Um, also, uh, Brother Bob did send me some other prayer requests. Um, let's see here. We want to pray for the widows in our church. Uh, be in prayer for Beth, Cecilia, and uh, Miss Ann. Um, pray for our teachers uh, in school and uh, pray for our administrators as they make the decisions that they make. And um, our teachers are facing a lot of challenges uh, having to teach with new methods and uh, not only teach in the classroom, but having to teach online as well. So pray that God will give them the strength. Uh, be in prayer for our services this weekend. Um, the uh, just our nation as a whole. I know there's been a lot of violence in our nation. We want to pray that there'd be calm in our nation once again. And as we enter into this political season, I know it's it's ugly. And uh, we just need to pray for our national leaders. And uh, please pray for our police all across our country. And uh, just pray for their protection and pray for our military as well. Um, just saw in the news just today that there was an explosion or, or bad fire up in uh, Grand Prairie area. It seems a plastic company, plastics company, I think they make bags and things like that, called on fire. Uh, as far as I know, it's still burning. I haven't heard of any injuries or anything like that, but I want to be in prayer for those who are battling uh, that blaze. Um, Anybody else have a prayer request that you'd like to uh, add in your comment section? Any prayer requests? Good to have you on, Linda. Bob. I think there's a few others here. I just can't see the names. Anyone else? All right. Well, just for a few moments, let's uh, let's bow our heads in prayer and uh, let's remember some of these requests that I've mentioned and do be in prayer for our, our church. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, as we uh, bow before you, God, uh, you've heard the request that I've already made. I, I just pray that you would touch each person uh, that we've talked about here. I pray for Bill and Sandra. I pray for Lewis and Bonnie. Pray for their continued healing and strength for their bodies. And God, I pray that they would be able to uh, get well and be able to come back to church soon. And just pray, God, that you would just meet every need that they have, Lord. And and Lord, um, I pray for our school teachers and the administra school administration as well, God, and they, as they make decisions and as they, Lord, as they continue to... Uh, make changes and try to adapt uh, to new teaching methods. And, and Lord, um, I pray that they'd be able to accomplish what they set out to do in, in teaching these kids. I pray that they would uh, learn much. And uh, Lord, uh, I pray that you'd be with our church, uh, be with us as we get ready for our worship service this Sunday. And I pray that everything would go well. And uh, pray that you'd meet every need that we have, Lord. I thank you for how you've blessed us, Lord. And God, I thank you for the individuals, Lord, just over the last week that I've been able to share the gospel with. And Lord, I praise you that one of them did pray to trust Christ. And I pray, God, you'd continue to work in the hearts and lives of the others. And, and God, um, I pray that, Lord, that you would be with our police officers all across our nation, God. They're they have a tough job, Lord, and 
and uh, I pray for them. I, I uh, have the utmost respect for our police, God, and, and Lord, uh, I pray that that Lord that people the those Lord who have Lord a wrong attitude or Lord wrong feelings toward our police, Lord, that you would change their hearts, God, and, and uh, Lord, I I pray that you'd be with our military i pray for their protection and and uh, god i pray for president donald trump and uh, vice president mike pence and i pray god that you'd give them great wisdom in these days and lord uh, be with congress as well and help them in all the decisions that they make god and lord i pray that uh, you just be with our nation god oh lord how i pray that your people would look up that this nation would turn back to you once again, Lord. And, oh, God, we have uh, lost so much uh, through the years. And, Lord, uh, I just pray that the church of Jesus Christ would rise up and be the light that we need to be, that we would continue to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, uh, just go with us through the week. Empower us to do your work. I pray, God, that we'd not live in fear. But, Lord, that we would uh, uh, have joy and peace. And, uh, Lord, that we would know that in whatever storm in life that we face, that you're right there with us. Just watch over us and care for us, and we'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. And once again, let me remind you that we will be coming together for worship uh, here on campus in our Family Life Center at 11 o'clock. Uh, Sunday school is not happening right now. We're going to give that a few more weeks, but uh, we will uh, have Sunday school on Facebook and on YouTube this Sunday at uh, 945. So I hope that you can uh, join us for the adult Bible study. God bless you. I hope you have a great week, and I sure hope to see you Sunday. Call me. If, uh, if you're not able to come right now, let's talk. Let's pray together on the phone. Um, and uh, I hope to see you soon. God bless. Take care. Bye-bye.